Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com, and today you won't believe where we're at. We are at SAMI, the Southern Aeromedical Institute, and we're meeting with Dr. Paul Buzi today. So let's head this way and uh, come take a look at his office here. Um, as we're heading in, you can see the, uh, the chamber and everything, but we're here to meet with Dr. Buzi, so let's just head this way real quick. There's a man of the hour. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jason, the Dr. Musa. How are you doing, sir? I'm so what do you have in store for us today? Uh, something pretty exciting. All right, let's hear it. Uh, we're going to fly you to about 23, 24,000 feet of true altitude. Okay. We're going to have you try and fly a Cessna 172 if you can. Okay. We, we know Cessnas don't go that high, but um, for the purpose of our training today, we're going to give you a really good chance to explore true high oh. so, And this is a true chamber, true low altitude experience. Okay. And you're going to be able to fly in and of course I get to be your air traffic controller and your flight dog at the same time. Alright, cool. Is it okay to take a look at the chamber? Let's real quick? go. Alright, cool. Look. You lead the way here. As you can see the chamber is 10 foot in diameter. Okay. This is our control panel. It's 32 feet long. <clears throat> it's both hyper and hypobaric. I use hyperbarics for clinical medicine applications. Right. But the chamber is also outfitted to be high altitude. Okay. And so here <clears throat> we control our high altitude functions and here we control our submarine functions, our right. high pressure. Interesting. So we're either flying or we're diving. Right. And of course at the moment we're at sea level. Right, I understand. So it's all about physiology, it's about pressure. Okay. And that's our primary objective. <clears throat> cool. Now, we're going to look at the chamber not as a submarine today, but we're not going to look at it as a jet. Right. A commercial jet, every year, um, uh, CRJ. Right. 10 foot diameter, 32 feet long. We're going to simulate a gold standard. We're going to take you to a true high altitude. Okay. We're going to capture it on video. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a chance to tell me how you feel. Okay. Not from a psychiatric standpoint. Right. <laughs> understand. From a, from a physiological standpoint. Right. Understand. But it gives you a chance to explore it. We're going to report it now on video. Okay. And you can walk out today with your own personal video. Cool. Can we see inside a little bit? Let's go inside. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Chamber's 10 foot in diameter. When we're in pilot mode, I have three flight sims. And so today you'll be seated in seat one. You'll have a own flight sim. Okay. But I typically do uh, three pilots at a time. Okay. And each pilot is his own, his or her own tail. Right. So up on the screen now, we're talking to three different aircraft in the sky. Right. So it is, I am acting like air traffic control. Right. Each person is different. The sensations of hypoxia are unique. Mm -hmm. Each person, <clears throat> the way they feel, the way they react, each person is different. So when we're watching, it's not only important to learn it in how you feel right. to yourself, but to be able to recognize it in your crew. Right. And so hence, we went ahead and wrote up crew-based. So if I have three pilots who are going to be flying together, and we capture it, each one can see that they're different. Right. So it's not just enough to recognize it yourself, but be able to recognize it. Right. So when we're inside the chamber, there would be three pilots, but today you get the whole aircraft to yourself. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So other than that, we ready to go flying then? I'm ready. Cool, man. I say we go I, flying. We do have a saying here at Sammy, if we, if we ain't flying, we're done. So that's it. I'm cool, gonna, man. Just going to try and get that on the t-shirt somewhere. Cool, man. That sounds good. Let's go <laughs> flying then. Cool. Okay, great. Good morning, Denver Center, 512 Romeo, how do you read? Ah, 512 Romeo has you loud and clear. That's great. Okay, Jason, we're going to start our slow ascent. Cabin altitude ascent rate will be about 2,000 feet. Okay. And beknownst to you, but unbeknownst to you, of course, you are a vulnerable pilot at high altitude today. Okay. But you get a chance to explore the sensations and feelings of hypoxia. Okay? 
Okay, 512 Romeo. What's your current speed, altitude, and direction? Two five zero seventy five uh, knots. And your altitude? Passing through seven thousand. Well, I'm trying to hold seven thousand four hundred right here. Okay. All right. Um, five one two Romeo. If you give me a new heading of one eight zero, please. You got it. Making a left turn, heading one eight zero. One of the Interesting thing that happens in a cabin depressurization is any time you drive a fixed volume of gas, such as your cabin in a commercial jet, there's a tendency for cooling. And so you're going to notice that the chamber cools very significantly. Yeah, I feel that. So that's the first thing. The second thing we notice is no different than when we're driving in the mountains. We notice our ears pop a lot. Yep, feel it. It's always easy for pilots to ascend. The inner ear acts much like a one-way valve, so it's easy for pilots to ascend. Where we get into trouble is when we descend and we're increasing pressure on the outer eardrum. We'll talk about that okay. after your flight. So cooling in the cabin along with frequent ear popping. Yeah, I can hear my ears just pop, pop, pop. So if we were flying in a pressurized aircraft, and very, very slowly, the aircraft was depressurizing. For some reason, the horn isn't working that day. You felt your ears popping a lot, and there was kind of a cooling. Those are our first physical signs, that rupture. And those two physical signs occur long before our first sensation of hypoxia. Right. And Romeo, <clears throat> 512 Romeo, is it possible that you think you could get up to 8,000? Yeah, I'll give you a climb to 8,000. Let's see what we can do here. My poor little 512 Romeo is working hard over here. So that, that engine's just screaming. <laughs> I just want to take a moment to review with you the most common signs and symptoms of hypoxia. And sometimes it's a lightheadedness. Sometimes we get a warm flushing over our chest and face. Sometimes we suddenly start to feel our heart pound. Our hands and feet might start to feel numb and tingly. Vision is very sensitive to high altitude. Sometimes we notice tunnel vision, maybe blurring of our vision. Okay. Maybe we notice depth of field seems kind of strange. And even though brilliant pilots such as yourself feel that you have control of the aircraft, you may find that complex multitasking would be difficult. So keep an eye on your concentration. Sure. Let me know if you're feeling sloppy. Okay. Will do. Well, sometimes our arms will suddenly feel like lead bricks as the oxygen drops and muscles start to get weak. So whatever the sensation is, it's going to be unique to you. Oh. So you and I will be chatting about that. Now, we're currently at a cabin altitude of 15,000. Okay. And so within the next several minutes, pay special attention to your body, and I want you to really pay attention to that very first sensation. Okay, yeah, you got it. Okay, 512 Romeo, if I could get a new heading of 090, please. Okay, left turn heading 090, 512 Romeo. We're going to hold our altitude for we at 8,000. That okay. we can maintain performance in the aircraft. I understand. So you're okay just shy of 8,000 then? Yep, I'm fine. Okay, sounds good. Turn to 090. Yeah, I'd like to go through a series of turns here. Of course. What's your current uh, speed? Uh, current speed 70 knots and increasing as I level off here. Now I want you to give me a new heading of 270, and I would like it to be a maximum sharp bank. Okay, you prefer right or left? Does it matter? Doesn't matter. Okay, I'll give you a right turn maximum bank here. Chamber should be feeling pretty cold by now. Yeah, it's a little chilly. I should have, like, uh, wore a jacket or something. <laughs> it comes in handy in Florida in the summertime. Yeah, jeez. Huh? Although it's going to get pretty warm on the way down. Bringing that nice deep bank about 30 degrees. 
Increase about 45 degrees coming around. It's looking real good out here. Oops. Any unusual sensations? We're at 18,000. Um, um, no, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, it's a little chilly in here, mm -hmm. but um, I'm feeling pretty good. I kind of have a sense that I'm losing a little bit of my periphery. Um, it's not gone. I mean, it's just a little bit blurrier than it would normally be over there, I feel like. But, I mean, it, it's still functional, but it, it's be the, the terminology to use. Roger that. Okay, let's do a real hard 45 degree banking turn, 90 degrees to the right. Okay, to the right. Uh, you want 090 as the heading? Yeah. You got it. Pass it to 30 degrees. There's your 45 degrees. Try to hold level here for you. It's a nice looking turn out here. Yeah, a little bit past my 45 degrees. Come on, baby. Good. That's yeah, nice. other than sinking like a rock. The passengers aren't liking it, though. No, they're, they're shaking their fists at me back there. Here we go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, now let's do a real sharp menu to the left. I mean sharp. You got it sharp. I'll go 60 degrees here. We've got some birds in the area. Yep, got it. Avoid those birds. How are you feeling now? Um, that, um, that blurred vision is becoming more pronounced. It's um, starting to blacken out almost into like a tunnel vision. Um, still slightly functional, but it's, it, I can feel it uh, certainly increasing. Um, if you haven't been able to tell, I'm kind of all over the place here, but still, still flying the airplane. Okay. How about your hands and feet? Um, Hands and feet. Well, now I got a little numbness at the tip of my fingertips. Okay, we got some numbness going. Um, nothing blue or anything crazy, but man, they're uh, they're tingling out there a little bit. So we've got some tingling out there a little bit, and a little bit of blurred vision, periphery, and yep. tunnel vision. How about your concentration? Um, I'm having to work harder. I feel like than I should have. How about, uh, does that make sense? How about how about how do your hands feel with your controls? Um, the right hand feels okay only because I have a desk grip on the yoke over here. <laughs> you know, maybe more blood going to that. And the left hand's just kinda hanging out on the throttle here. It's not doing a whole lot. Any warm flushing over the chest? Um, no, my chest feels heavy. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Do you notice that you're taking deeper breaths? Yeah, I'm working harder to get that oxygen, huh? That's right. So you've got deeper breaths, having some troubles with controls. Um, you've got some numbness and tingling in your hands. You've got some tunnel vision. You've got some blurry vision. Okay. Your classic textbook of hypoxia. Right. Now, if you are in a real-world situation, what do you think you should do? I would don the mask. And after that? Um, I would declare an emergency. I mean, this is a serious situation. Roger that. 512 Romeo, you've had a cabin depressurization. Please uh, uh, don your mask and descend. Okay, donning my mask and descending. You got it. So, Dr. Booza, how about you? Jason, that was an outstanding flight. It was awesome. You know, <clears throat> you, you had every text. You, I think you studied from the textbook last night every symptom that a pilot could have, and you had them. Right. You really did. Um, as a matter of fact, the very first thing we noticed, and you were a very astute observer, is you did notice changes in your vision. Right. Vision is the most sensitive of changes physiologically in the body. The problem is sometimes as busy pilots, we don't notice it. We're focused, we're looking at our instruments, and we really don't notice the change in our vision, but you did, and that's a great sign. Some people have classic tunnel vision, and I mean, it's very dramatic. Some people don't, right. but you did. And the very first symptom you noticed was exactly at 18,000 feet. Interesting. And that's the point I want to make, is that when we have a cabin, ascent rate of 2,000 feet a minute, mm -hmm. starting from physiological normal ranges, such as a cabin right. of 5 to 8,000 feet on a commercial plane, or just from sea level, or you're taking off and you're unpressurized Cessna 172 at 3 or 4,000 feet. But once we get to the higher altitudes, and if we get there at about 2,000 feet a minute, 
90% of all pilots will have their first sensation of hypoxia at 18,000 feet. Wow. That's based on our program here, what we have flown now, in this model with sim integration and air traffic control. Mm -hmm. Based on 1,700 pilots that have flown. 90% of 1,700 pilots called in their first sensation of hypoxia. Mm -hmm. And for you, it was a change in the periphery of your vision. Right. And, like clockwork, Jason, you came in right at 18. Wow. I call, <clears throat> I call it a poor man's alternative. Right. If the instrument wasn't working and you noticed that sensation, now the second one you noticed was then came the a more aggressive tunneling and then you had yeah, nothing else in the mm -hmm. Now by the time you had that, you are already at 21. Right. Things are starting to happen very fast. Then of course, as you saw in your video, you noticed that you were having troubles with controls. <laughs> you know, you were all over the place. Right. And, and then you started to notice that your chest started feeling heavy mm -hmm. and that you were taking deeper breaths and that your breathing was heavier. Yeah. And those are all classic signs and symptoms. You had numbness and tingling in your hands. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I, could, I couldn't buy you another symptom. Right. <laughs> there's, an, there's, there's, there's another one that's fairly common that we didn't have and that would be the warm flushing over the chest. It's very okay. common. That's what I get when I right. do research in the chamber. I oh. always get this warm flushing over the chest and face. Uh -huh. And sometimes I can feel my heart pumping. Right. And as you know today, we recorded your pulse ox and your heart rate through the entire flight. You just looked at it. Right. Your oxygen saturation dropped as low as 64%. I can't believe that. That's very, very low. Yeah, I know. That was right at the moment. So we can say, what can we say about that? We can say, Jeez that anyone else who has 64%, we would consider that a medical emergency, mm -hmm. right? But here you had four or five symptoms, but you seem pretty much in control, but right. your SATs were already 64. Yeah. What that is, is you were a minute to two minutes away from passing out. Really? That close? But yet, it didn't seem like there was that much drama. It didn't no, seem it like did. you were about ready yeah, to fall no, apart. not at all. And that's why the toxic is yeah. When it comes on slowly, over 10 to 12 minutes, mm -hmm. we think we're okay, mm -hmm. we'll fixate right to the very end, mm -hmm. and then we'll just pass out. Wow. So what I flew you today was the farthest I could take, mm -hmm. once again, because your wife is here with us today. Right, I'm sure that everyone would laugh at me if I actually passed out on yeah, camera. Probably don't be good. <laughs> but it does happen. And right. in the real world, to make a serious point, that's exactly what happens. No, I understand. The Helios Greek model, the Payne Stewart model, and as you know, yeah. we just had an event last week mm -hmm. over the Gulf of Mexico in a Cessna. We had a solo pilot flying a pressurized twin engine Cessna. It was probable that they, it's too early to say to know for sure, but it's a high probability of a case of cabin depressurization. And him as a solo pilot, had to rely on his own sensations yeah. uh, and how important it is to get to recognize the problem number one, mm -hmm. dome the mask, then descend, then declare. Right. That was a great flight, Jason. That was very impressive. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Todd, thank you so much, Dr. Cruz. I really appreciate it. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Guys, if you're interested in taking a spin in the chamber yourself, you can learn more about Dr. Booz and what he does at Sammy dash aeromedical.com you can see the url right there or you can simply contact him at the information below or using the contact form um, on the website and dr buza you mentioned there was one more crucial important thing you mentioned what was that again jason it's essential mm -hmm. that all pilots always keep on learning you're so good man <laughs> thank you <laughs>